Lovely day to you, our distinguished viewers, and thank you once again for joining us on Women on the Watch, powered by the Shapers Act. At Women on the Watch, our aim is to expose time-tested principles for practical application to modern day personal development and relationship management issues. My name is Wonola Detayo, the shaper. In the past three weeks, we have been engaged in a series titled Fatherhood Portraits. The series has been dedicated to fathers because June is the month in which we celebrate Father's Day. Please be reminded that if, if you have a father in your life or a father figure or a spiritual father, do remember to honor them for the significant work that they're doing in the development of generations. During last week's episode, we looked at failed fathers and our case study was Lot, the dad. We learned crucial lessons from the failures of Lot and we also discussed ways in which fathers can escape the trap of failed fatherhood. Today, we shall be advancing the series on fatherhood portraits with the episode titled, Devoted Fathers. Our case study will be Joseph, the dad. Now our Bible text is taken from Matthew chapter two, verses 13 to 14, and I'll be reading the New International Version. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the Father of all fathers, we beseech you, Lord, to teach us by yourself the art of fatherhood. We ask, O oh God, on behalf of every father and fathers to be, that Lord, you will be their teacher, Lord, you will be their guide. That as we go through crucial lessons in the devoted father, you will help every father to tow the right path so that they will leave positive legacies in the lives of their children, their families, and nations at large. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's look at the story of Joseph the dad as exposed to us in Matthew chapter 1, verse 16, all the way to Matthew chapter 2, verse 23, and also in Luke chapter 1, verse 22, all the way to Luke chapter 2, verse 52. The story of Joseph. Joseph was the husband of Mary and the earthly father of Jesus of Nazareth. The lineage of Joseph has been traced back to King David. Joseph was engaged to marry Mary in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. But whilst waiting for the day of marriage, Joseph discovered that Mary was already pregnant. Joseph made a plan to quietly dissociate himself from what appeared to be an illegitimate pregnancy that Mary was carrying. He was to dissolve their engagement without public notice so as not to subject Mary to an open shame. Because if he did at the time, Mary would have been stoned to death according to the custom of that time. An angel, however, told Joseph that Mary's pregnancy was truly of the Holy Ghost in Matthew chapter one, verses 20 to 21. Joseph therefore went ahead and got married to Mary. As soon as Jesus was born in Bethlehem, according to Matthew 1.25, where Joseph and Mary had traveled to participate in a census. 
an angel came again to warn Joseph to relocate with baby Jesus and Mary because King Herod was after the baby's life. Joseph took his wife and baby and relocated to Egypt. After King Herod had died, an angel appeared again to Joseph, this time instructing Joseph to return to Nazareth as documented in Matthew 2, 19 to 20. Joseph left Egypt with his wife Mary and her baby Jesus to settle in Nazareth in Galilee to avoid exposure to dangers from Herod's son. Joseph was a learned man and was considered wise and highly literate. He was a carpenter by profession, but his trade never stood in his way of his devotion to his fatherhood responsibilities. He devoted himself fully and completely to the sacred role of father. In fact, some scholars have indicated that Joseph taught Jesus his craft and they worked together in the early years. Jesus was indeed called Carpenter's son in Matthew chapter 13, verses 53 to 55, and in John chapter 6, verses 41 to 51. So people knew Jesus as the son of the carpenter, his father. By the time Jesus was 12 years old, Joseph and Mary traveled with him for the Passover visit to the temple. When they left, they suddenly could not find Jesus. And then they went in search of him. When they found him, they found him in the temple, according to Luke chapter 2, verses 41 to 51. We discover in the Bible no further mention was made of Joseph, as it would appear he had fulfilled his sacred mission of fatherhood to protect and nurture God's son in his formative childhood years for an eventual powerful launching into a global ministry that changed the world forever. Our prayer today is that all fathers and fathers in the making will be granted by God to have hearts that will be yielded to God and devoted to the sacred calling of fatherhood so that they can raise godly seeds that will change their worlds for better and serve as beacons of hope and beacons of light to their generations. You are most welcome back. What a beautiful story of a devoted father and what an awesome legacy that changed the entire world. In today's episode of Devoted Fathers, we will look at two things. First, what are the lessons that Joseph has taught us in fatherhood? And then secondly, we will look at the role of fathers in the lives of their children and in the lives of their families. But before we do this, let's take some announcements. Please stay tuned, don't go away. Hello expectant mothers. Do you know that shaping your child's destiny begins long before birth? The womb is a place where children can be blessed and equally a place where children can be maimed. The Pregnancy Watch by Wanuola Adetayo is a uniquely conceived tool designed to support you in active participation in this process. Presented in an easy-to-read devotional format, this best-selling book combines the physical and spiritual insights backed by medical research to equip and empower you to fulfill the awesome responsibility of birthing new life. Dr. Yinka Moshoro, a consultant pediatrician, cardiologist and public health physician, has this to say. The Pregnancy Watch is a well-crafted and skillfully blended piece on the biological and spiritual development of a child in the mother's womb. It is for this reason that this book is highly recommended for every woman trusting God for a child and those who are already pregnant. Visit www.theshapersarc.org slash books or call 0812-402-0538 to place an order. Now, we look at the lessons that Joseph teaches us in fatherhood. Number one lesson is kindness. In Matthew 1, 18 to 19, 
we see Joseph as a kind-hearted and merciful husband and father. He was considerate. He was sensitive to Mary. And therefore, he tried not to expose Mary, even when Joseph thought that Mary was carrying an illegitimate pregnancy. He made up his mind to show sensitivity and consideration by not exposing Mary to the public so that she would not be stoned, even when he knew in his heart that Mary was guilty. And we could see that this Joseph of a man made sure that he played his own part to encourage fathers. If you read in Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13, Colossians 3, 12 and 13, it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord will forgive you. You see, Joseph gave us an example of kindness in fatherhood. It is important that fathers, husbands, remember this rich legacy of kindness. And we need not just to be kind, but also to teach our children and our families to be kind. Even when we feel people are deserving of punishment or public disgrace, we need to reach out in our hearts with kindness and consideration and sensitivity. The second lesson that Joseph teaches us in fatherhood is obedience. Joseph was not only kind-hearted, he was fully yielded to God. In the face of what looked like personal and public humiliation, Joseph obeyed God to take a pregnant bride to the altar as wife. On instruction of the angel, Joseph left his trade, left his business to relocate to Egypt and again back to Nazareth in spite of all the attendant inconveniences. You see, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22b, 1 Samuel 15, 22b tells us to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams. Obedience to God is a critical lesson that Joseph teaches us in fatherhood. A father who is not obedient to God will endanger his children like Saul because his disobedience not only endangered him, but in that disobedience, he lost his kingdom and in fighting an unnecessary battle, all the lives of his children were also lost. So Joseph teaches us another lesson, which is obedience. The third lesson that Joseph teaches us in fatherhood is the crucial need for a father to be protective. So he teaches us a lesson in protection. As a good father, Joseph was protective of his wife and her son. He endured the hardship of relocation twice just so that his family and his child, his family's safety for the pleasure of business or the fame of ministry, like we have seen in some of the portraits of fathers that we have discussed. Joseph fully devoted himself to his fatherly duty of protection. No wonder Jesus declares in John chapter 17, verse 12, John 17, 12, he says, while I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by the name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that the scripture could be fulfilled. A devoted father does not take his protective duty lightly, but commits himself to the protection of his family physically, spiritually, and in all ramifications. These are at least three lessons that Joseph has taught us in fatherhood. Now, we want to look at the role of fathers. Fathers have a number of roles. Today, we will look at only six roles. You see, fatherhood is not a hobby, according to an anonymous writer. Fatherhood is not a hobby, but a vocation. It's a sacred calling that is life encompassing. So we look at 
six roles of fathers using the acronym FATHER. F, a father is a faith builder. A, a father is an advisor. T, a father is a teacher and a trainer. H, a father is a help, a helper, a head, and also a hero. E, a father is an example. And R, a father is a responsible provider. Now we take each one and try to go in detail. Let's drill down. The first role of a father is that of a faith builder. A father has a crucial role in the development of his children, chief of which is the spiritual development because the spiritual dictates the natural, dictates the physical. Genesis chapter 18 verse 19 says this of Abraham. It says, for I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Joseph was a faith builder, not just by his personal example, but by establishing family spiritual practices. He went with his children and his wife and son to the temple. As an example, he didn't send them to the temple. He didn't say, mom, take your son to the temple. He went with them, establishing spiritual practices. So a father is a faith builder. The second role of a father is that of an advisor. And that's a crucial role. A father is to advise his children using his authority, using his experience, and most importantly, instructing the children on life issues using the word of God. Proverbs 1 verse 8a. Proverbs 1 8a. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Joseph was available to advise and instruct his son together with his wife, Mary. It is upon this foundation of rule making and instructions that a child can be disciplined for contravention. You can't discipline a child when in the first instance you have not set rules, you have not given instruction, which is what many fathers do. They begin to just chastise the child without having played the role in advising and giving clear instruction. You see, the wisdom of children is built upon the acceptance of the advice and the discipline of their fathers as documented in Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 20. So when a father is not advising, the children will not be wise. Now let's take a look at the third role of fathers. And that is the role of being a trainer and a teacher. It is a father's duty to train, to teach, to groom, to educate, prepare, and develop his children for life even as he partners with his wife on this awesome responsibility for which he must take the lead and set the tone. In too many homes is the mothers that are taking the lead and then they will tell the child, I will tell your father for you, let your father come now. That's not the way it is supposed to be. Proverbs chapter four, verses three and four says, for I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he taught me and said to me, take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commandments and you will live long. We see clearly that even the longevity of a child is highly subjected to the extent to which the father has taught and trained that child. A father is duty bound to educate his children, building their character, in their formative ages, social, spiritual, academic, and domestic education all form part of the holistic training that a father owes to his children. A father needs to teach the children the fear of God. He needs to teach the children to be obedient to the commandments of God. He needs to teach the children to love the almighty God with all of their hearts. You see, even a father must teach his children about sensuality. 
It was the absence of training that caused Amnon to behave the way he behaved. And how do I know that? Check Proverbs chapter 5, verses 15 to 20. We see a father telling his son, my son, you cannot embrace the bosom of a stranger. That is part of sensuality training. Joseph trained Jesus in carpentry work. He trained Jesus in spiritual matters. And when King David was to die, he told Solomon how to be a man in 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Listen to this. He says, I am about to go the way of all the earth, he said. So, be strong, act like a man, and observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go. So even in David's deathbed, he remembered to be a father to Solomon. A fourth role of fathers is to be head, to be a helper, and to be a hero. Every family needs a head, and headship is a God-ordained role of husbands and fathers, as documented in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. A father gives leadership and direction in the home. Joseph demonstrated leadership by leading his wife and his children. When they needed to relocate, he led them. When they needed to go to the temple, he was there to lead. When Jesus needed to be trained in craftsmanship, he was there to take the lead. A father also lends a helping hand to his children, especially in their areas of struggles, whether it be in sports or in reading or writing or spelling, even cooking and anything for that matter. It's very interesting. I know some daughters who confess that it's even their fathers that taught them how to cook. Listen. A father's encouraging words can help a child to aim for great heights as the child's confidence receives a boost from the words of a trusting father. Our Lord Jesus Christ prayed God to send us a helper, even as God's children. In John chapter 14 and verse 16, he says, and I quote, And I will ask the father, and he will give you another advocate, to help you and be with you forever. So if our Lord Jesus understands that as children, we need helpers, then fathers must realize that their children need them as helpers in their areas of struggles. Let's look at the fifth role that fathers play in the lives of their families. E, they are examples. According to Michael Robinson, being a good father means being a good model. One of the best ways that a father can impact his children is not just to teach and train, but to exemplify all the teaching through his own personal action. Joseph was an example in his obedience to God. Joseph was an example in his kindness and love towards his family. He didn't need to teach it. He was the epitome. Joseph was an example in his diligence as a carpenter and in his commitment to God. We see also Joshua leading as an example to his own family. He documents in the book of Joshua. He said to them, I and my, ch and I and my children, we will serve the Lord. Paul told Tommy, Timothy, his spiritual son, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, he says, follow my example as I follow the example of of Christ. Let's look at the last role that fathers play, and that is the role of responsible provider. According to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 6, anyone who does not provide for his relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. It is a fundamental role for a father to be a responsible provider. Fathers must provide for their families. We see in Genesis chapter 30, verse 30, Jacob said to Laban, the little 
you had before I came has increased greatly. And the Lord has blessed you wherever I have been. He said, but now, when may I do something for my own household? So beyond being a provider, the father has a duty to prepare the children for the workplace, to prepare them for money management, to prepare them for tithing, giving, all of these things to make them financially literate and financially responsible. Fathers, it is important as we conclude today's episode to realize the need for urgency. Fathers have a few short years to mold their children, probably only 10 years before they go off to college, maximum 15 years before they get off to the university. Therefore, fathers have only a window of 10 to 15 years to pass godly inheritance to the next generation. It is for this reason that Barbara Johnson says, to be in your children's memories tomorrow, you have to be in their lives today. Joseph the carpenter is an epitome of devoted fatherhood and has left good examples for fathers to follow. Our prayer for all fathers out there is that you travel the journey of fatherhood in a manner such that God will grant you divine wisdom and a yielded heart for good success in the mighty name of Jesus. As we close, I leave you with Abraham Lincoln's quote. He says, and I quote, there's only one way to bring up a child in the way you should go, and that is that you travel that way yourself. Till I come your way next week, this is Wonola Detayo, the shaper, wishing all fathers God's grace as you face your fatherhood responsibilities. God bless you.